so we just talked about the cone beam CAT scan technology, kind of where it was developed, why a lot of upper cervical flare chiropractors are moving towards the technology, and now I'm actually going to show you exactly why uh, most of the offices throughout the country are gradually migrating over to this amazing 3D technology. Now this particular uh, patient just recently had a pretty catastrophic trauma. Uh, they didn't die, but almost. <laughs> Uh, and, and so this image that you see on the screen is a three-dimensional model. Uh, it's almost as if you just stripped away the skin, fat, and muscles from the live person and you were left with a 3D model of their bone structure. Here it is. So this particular person, like I said, was in a massive trauma. You can see this right here is the C1 vertebra. Right here is the C2 spinous process. If you feel the back of your neck, you can feel bumps in the back of your spine, the lower back, mid-back, you feel those hard bumps, those are actually the spinous process. Now in this particular person, you can see that spinous is way off to the right, and as we go down to the C3 spinous, it's more in the midline, C4, more in the midline, 5, we're actually right in the midline. So they suffered a big twisting type trauma, the axis dislodged out of position, and the rest of the spine has followed through with that misalignment. In a minute what we're going to do, since the Blair Upper Cervical Procedure, what we look at is how the joints actually fit together. We're going to look at the joints and you're actually going to see for yourself how the joint has actually misaligned from the injury that the individual is in. And then you can come to understand why this information is vital because what we're doing is we're correcting structural joint articular misalignments and we want to be precise, so we want to know how far it's out of position, we want to know the angulation of the joint, so we can introduce uh, precise quick forces to take a vertebra or joint that's locked out of position and get it back in motion so the central nervous system can function the way that it's supposed to. Now one of the cool things you can do with this 3D model is we can move it in any angle uh, that we want. So here you can see, um, right here, Right here is the C2 joint. You can actually see the surface of the joint of axis here. Here's the surface of the joint of third cervical here. And you can see for yourself that that joint has misaligned forward in this plane, which correlates with that C2 spinous being kicked off over to the right. The joint has ramped forward. Um, there you can really see it. So we can focus in on each of the joints. We can look at the teeth, not that I want to, but we can look down through the neurocanal. There's where the spinal cord fits through. In all of this information, when you have a spinal misalignment moving in a certain direction, we can look in the joint we can see, we look at the general anatomy, we can look through the neurocanal. All of these things should match up. Again, practicing this work with digital x-ray, we were taking three-dimensional structures, putting on a two-dimensional screen. It was good information. We got a lot of sick people better, but the CBCT scan takes the imaging technology to a whole new realm and it gives the doctor a whole new level of certainty when we're making these final corrections. And since we are dealing with the most important area of your whole spine, the brain's or the nervous system, the brain stem, you want to be really sure that you know exactly how things are misaligned so you can correct it properly and of course be as much benefit to the patient because our entire goal in our office is to take people who have chronic problems, make precise corrections and get them better. So what I want to take you to now is I want to take you to what we call slicing. So <coughs> each joint in the spine where they fit, they fit like a mirror image, they fit perfectly. And if you have been in an injury and the atlas, the C1 has misaligned out of position, and we take a slice of the joint of the head and C1 all the way around, we can get an idea of exactly how the joint has misaligned. So we're going to now take you to what we call curved slicing. Now this um, right here is the frame and magnum, that is the hole in the bottom of the head, that's right where the brain stem comes out of. And then what we've done, this uh, red or orange color, we have marked out the edge of the joint here on the left all the way around and then we've migrated over to the joint on the right and moved all the way around and this blue line will basically take a slice through the joint all the way around the joint 
and you can literally see how that joint fits to the skull. So let's show you that now. That is this. So this slice right here as we move it, this right here is the slice. So right here, this structure is the skull joint. This structure right here is called the lateral mass of C1, which is this. And now you can see what we look at as a doctor. Here is the joint margin of the C1, and here is the joint margin of the skull. You can see clearly that this joint has moved in this direction to this. And now, that's just one slice. So what we can do is we can move along the joint margin, and you can get an idea three-dimensionally exactly what's going on in there. Whoops, wrong one. So here you go. Now we're in a different cut. You can see again that C1 is clearly overlapped compared to the skull joint. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the other joint. This is the right joint on the other side. And we'll go along the longitudinal axis. And here we go. We got an even bigger misalignment. So basically what's happened to this person is their C1 vertebra is ramped up under the skull. Both joints have what we call overlapped and you can see an even bigger misalignment here. So this is the skull, and this is C1. Now, on some people, you'll see one side will be completely even, and on the other side, you'll see an overlap like this. Other people, depending again how the uh, concussion of force went in and the injury, you will see the atlas joint actually has moved under. So there's only three possibilities on that joint. It can be even, it can move off, which we call overlap, or it can move under. And again, that depends on how the injury uh, happened and how the vertebra misaligned. So when we correct these problems, uh, we use the joint angle, and of course we introduce a force in the opposite direction to how that vertebra has misaligned. And our goal is to take that vertebra that's locked and get it back in position, get the pressure off your spinal cord or brain stem. For those of you who don't know, this area is where your brain stems sit and everything that you don't think about, heart function, respiratory function, blood pressure control, thermal regulation, muscle tone regulation, I could keep going, all is controlled in that area. So it's really important. We're um, really into being as precise and specific as we can in the office to maximize the results that we see in the office. And the last two weeks it's been a lot of fun because we've seen lots of lives change and we're looking forward. Uh, to using this technology on thousands of people and giving them their life back. So we offer a free consultation in our office uh, in Los Angeles and Carson, and we hope to see you all soon.